My name is Zach Terrell. I'm going to talk a little bit today about how uh, we've adapted uh, a fairly big premium plugin to Gutenberg. Uh, it's a journey. I'm going to tell you about that journey, some of the some of the highs and the lows, uh, and go through a bunch of that. A little bit about myself. Uh, I'm currently the director of products at Modern Tribe. Uh, I've been using WordPress since 1.5, so that's 13 years of WordPress. I've uh, quietly been in this community for many, many years. Uh, I attended the second WordCamp in 2007, back when, uh, when this was a much smaller community. Uh, but I've, I've been in this space for a long time across a few different companies. Uh, Modern Tribe itself, if you're not familiar with us, uh, we are a digital agency and a products business. Our agency does big contract projects for brands you know. Uh, our products business is most famous for the events calendar. Uh, we also have a, a fairly heavily, although declining because of core functionality, uh, image widget plugin uh, and, and an event tickets plugin. I want to talk just very briefly before I go too far into this slide. Uh, I'm going to talk a lot about this particular journey we've been on with Gutenberg, but these 12 people are, are the team that I currently have at Modern Tribe who are focused on Gutenberg. They've got other things on their plate, they're doing other things, but really most of the work I'm going to talk about is their work. Uh, it's, it, you know, I'm going to show you some sketches of some designs that we've done. Those aren't my sketches. You're going to see annotations on those. Those aren't my annotations. Uh, this team has been doing some really amazing work here and I, I would feel really bad uh, to take credit for the effort that's been done there. I'm the director of product. I'm, I'm not doing uh, as much hands-on. Uh, that's primarily uh, these fine folks here. All right, briefly, the events calendar. Uh, the events calendar is the most popular calendar plugin on uh, 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 in the WordPress ecosystem. Uh, anybody use the events calendar in the room? Yeah, I love to see all those hands. It's fantastic. Yeah, we currently have 600,000 active installs. Uh, there's certainly bigger plugins, but we're we're really big in the space. Uh, we we've, we've been doing it since 2010. Uh, and so, insert Gutenberg. Gutenberg is, you've heard a ton about it over the last couple days. Uh, not a couple days, a couple hours, many hours. Uh, Gutenberg is a needed disruption in the WordPress editing. You heard, uh, you heard this morning in the, in the opening keynote, the discussion about, about that part of the journey and why it is needed and why they're doing it. Uh, at Modern Tribe, we very much agree. Uh, our, one of our partners, Reed, has been speaking at WordCamp since like, 2014 at least, uh, about how, uh, how the WordPress editing interface really needed to evolve and take on the next step and act differently. Uh, we have some internal stuff that we use with our agency customers that, that actually is very similar to Gutenberg. Um, we were very much waiting for this and hoping for this and realized it was needed. I don't think I have to talk much in particular about the specifics of how Gutenberg works because we've seen so much of that today. But as a products business, I came back from WordCamp US uh, last December, and it was a very clear moment. Gutenberg was coming. We saw it on the stage at the State of the Word uh, when Matt showed showed a, a live demo of the product, and it became clear this is not you know this is not theoretical anymore. Uh, Gutenberg's coming. And as a as a products business, we said, do we do we try to survive this? Do we just do the minimal? and sort of coast into Gutenberg with, with a base functional events calendar and then figure out how to do it the right way later? Or do we go all in and totally and fully embrace this new editing experience and, and all of the complexities of the implementation and the uncertainty? Uh, and I went, to, I went to our partners and I said, you know, how, how comfortable are you with this? It's gonna be a big investment. We gotta put our roadmap on pause uh, because we're gonna have to do this instead. Uh, they said, yes, let's do that. Uh, I went to my marketing team and said, if we're gonna do this, we probably should talk about it a bunch. That's gonna be work for you. Uh, and they were like, yes, we wanna write about this. And I went to the developers and said, this is gonna be some new stuff. Uh, Matt told us to learn JavaScript deeply. We sort of took some of that. Uh, we learned it a little bit deeply, but you're gonna have to go even further. Are you ready for that? And, and they were. And the, and the designers were excited about the challenge. So the whole team uh, really bought into this idea that 
Gutenberg is for plugins and, and for, in some ways, for WordPress in general, is kind of like the biggest uh, innovation we've seen since custom post types, right? It's this huge change to the way that we interact with WordPress. And we decided as a team, as a company, that we were gonna be all in on this. We, we were gonna put all the focus that we needed to be ready as soon as possible. So get past this big decision point. All right, we're deciding to get into it. Um, let's talk about the events calendar a little bit. The events calendar is at its core about events, which are different than posts and pages. So now we're talking about a custom post type. Uh, and in the case of the events calendar, we're actually talking about lots of custom post types. And in addition to lots of custom post types, we're talking about lots of uh, post meta and custom taxonomies. So it's a fairly unique and complicated challenge. It's a lot of pieces for us to try to figure out how we're going to address. So I'm going to take you through a few pieces just to remind the folks uh, in the room who are using the events calendar what you know some of the core pieces of this editing experience look like in our current product, as well as those who aren't using the events calendar to just quickly understand what we're talking about here. Current classic post editor, right? Uh, if we zoom in a little bit, we have this meta box in the events calendar. This is really kind of the heart and soul. The core of the events calendar is really this meta box. And if we start to break this down, um, we've got probably the most important piece, which is the date and time, right? Events have dates and times. Uh, we have to, essentially, every event has to have a date and a time. Uh, it has to have time zones and uh, whether or not it's an all day event. Uh, we're gonna have UI components like a date picker and a time picker. These are more custom and more specialized than what we get out of a core post editing experience. We've got locations, right? Because events happen somewhere. Sometimes where they happen is online, but generally they're somewhere, right? Like WordCamp, you've gotta have this particular location for your event. Sometimes events have multiple locations. In this case, we're also talking about an associated, another post type. We have a venue post type and it's associated with the event. So we've got more complicated UI components to worry about so you can select existing ones in addition to creating new ones. We've got organizers, same deal. Another post, custom post type that has custom post meta associated with it. Another thing that you have to define and associate with an event. We've got things like an event website and event costs, and, and costs are different depending on context. Sometimes it's free, sometimes it's show up with a can of food to donate, right? Like it can get really complicated and strange. Um, we have custom taxonomies like event categories, which are slightly different than regular post categories. We have these weird options that have no reflection on the front end, things like whether or not this particular event should show up in event listings at all, if you think about the model of Gutenberg, that's the kind of setting that, that really doesn't have a place amongst the block editor. Um, the ability to feature an event, uh, and you know, maybe a little less essential to people conceptually, but important to us as a business, we have this concept of upsells. They need to be small and not obtrusive, but we also still need to make money and pay our mortgages and things, right? So we do have to sneak some upsells in somewhere so that we don't uh, go out of business. This is just one of our plugins. This is the events calendar. We have many plugins as a business. Um, when we start looking at this challenge and the scope of it, even in the context of one plugin, it, it's pretty intense. Uh, just, you know, lots of components, lots of inventorying. And then we start thinking about, okay, um, we, in baseline WordPress, uh, Gutenberg right now, there there's, isn't a, an idea of required blocks. Well, how do you have an event with a date and time without a required block, right? You can't have, you can't let your users remove that block from the editor because then it's not really an event. Uh, we have things like those extended settings I talked about. Uh, when we first started, there was no idea of multiple layouts or those sorts of things. Uh, and our blocks maybe get mixed in with everybody else's blocks and, and that experience is sort of weird. And then on top of that, we've got this uncertain roadmap. Right, Gutenberg early phases still, uh, no launch date, right? Just trying to get you to understand the complexity of, of this once we start stripping the layers away. 
And then on top of that, we have these concerns and anxieties. And I'm not going to go through all of these, uh, partly for the transcriber's benefit, but also just it's, it's overwhelming. There's lots of things here. Uh, we, we heard John talk about the, uh, the block storage format and how to make sure we weren't being blobby and we were still being chunky, right? The, the events calendar is chunky and we want to kind of stay that way. Uh, accessibility, mobile response, all of these things, right? This is, this is sort of where our concerns and anxieties start to kick in. But we're still optimistic. We've, we've got to look and start breaking down these challenges and looking at them and thinking about how do we, how do we get through these uh, one by one. So, the, so one of the big ones we needed to address right away is Gutenberg isn't done. It's changing. It, it's, it's going to change. The way that we hook in is going to change. The particular implementation, the functions we call all these things, right? It's going to change. So our first solution here was to decide to kind of follow the model of what Gutenberg itself was doing and release events calendar functionality as an extension. This allowed us to not disrupt or add additional bugs or complexity for the existing users of the events calendar while we can still iterate and have early adopters grab our extension, install it, see how the events calendar might work in a new Gutenberg world. This allowed us to do a lot of regular iteration, uh, certainly not as much as the Gutenberg team who I think is at like 30 plus releases. We've, we, we're doing much smaller ones. We've done 15 since March. Um, the, the additional benefit of this, we have to share that, that progress in public. Instead of holding those changes back and waiting till it was perfect, we could roll those out and start getting feedback from early adopters. This has worked really, really well. Uh, I think it's the sort of thing we might do in the future, doing big features or big changes in this kind of standalone silo uh, is, is actually really freeing. The next challenge we started thinking about was block flexibility. And, and the last session hinted at this a little bit uh, when talking about building a theme or building components. There's lots of different ways you can configure Gutenberg. There's lots of different options. Uh, early on, we had our designers take kind of a blue sky look at what an event might look like. They did up some sketches. They imagined, you know, these are, these are conceptually the sorts of things that might look really nice as an event. And, and I agree, you know, there's some fantastic stuff hidden in these sketches, uh, but it's also overwhelming. There's, there's so much here that's changed. Um, there's so many different ideas stacked in here. Um, and again, right, Gutenberg's still changing. So one of the first things we decided is, is to start, um, we would do our implementations with this design concept of layer cake. Um, Gutenberg itself allows us to take blocks and put them in columns and, and make things go side by side. That's a, a, a very idealized, nice, beautiful way to do design, uh, but it inserts a lot more variables. So we said, okay, to start, just to get our initial release out, everything is gonna be just a single, single full width block. So when we're talking about date and time, we'll make it go the full width. When we talk about the organizers or the venues, you know, we'll make these blocks go full width. And then we, can, then we can intersperse the other Gutenberg blocks, reduce the complexity, and really kind of lean into this layer cake design. And, and every time a designer would come forward and say, well, like, well, but you know, we can make this a little smaller and show it this way, we'd be like, no, just gotta, we just gotta get through this. this let's, let's, let's focus on making everything full width for now. We'll loop back and, and we'll address that later. The other piece is that when you start thinking about all the possibilities and all of the optimism of Gutenberg, the potential scope of what we're talking about feels infinite. I think it might actually be infinite, but that's kind of hard to test. But you start thinking about it. You start thinking about all these options that we can put in the settings and, and all these different ways that people can configure yeah! things. Nice job, Amanda. <laughs> Bless you. Um, so infinite scope, right? It felt, it felt overwhelming. Uh, and, and my strategist, Leah, went off and she imagined all of the different things that we could do, not, not just for feature parity, but off into the future. And she came back with this, uh, with this beautiful document that I, I jokingly call her crazy wall uh, or her, you know, her rainbow diagram, uh, which talks about how do we start thinking about 
you know, addressing the core functionality, addressing what feature parity for the events calendar before worrying about, uh, about the new and the shiny things, the, the things we really want to do. Can we, address, can we address the things we have to do to be ready and to provide a good Gutenberg experience before we worry about the really, the really fancy stuff? So our solution there, again, kind of shown in that rainbow diagram, is we broke this up into multiple releases. Early on, we would just, let's just get an extension out, like something that introduces these concepts of blocks for the events calendar, works with our post types, just let's get that out. We're done with release zero. Then we said, okay, let's make sure the events calendar fully supports Gutenberg. We're very close to done with release one. You can go check it out right now. Uh, release two is where we start to move outside of the events calendar and apply those patterns to all of our premium plugins and our other open source plugins. And then once you get past that, things start to get more interesting. Uh, that stuff's further out. I think those are the new and shiny things. When we start talking about uh, you know, redefining our interface for dealing with recurring events or uh, really fancy layouts and, and advanced block settings that, that we're all really excited about doing, we're pushing those out. Uh, implementing all of our short codes as blocks, these sorts of things. So breaking it down into multiple release phases was something that was very helpful. So then we said, okay, here's the title slide for the, for the session is, is adapting to Gutenberg. What are we gonna do to actually adapt to this, to this new interface? So we started off inventory. Let's, let's create some sketches and look at each of the components that make up an event and, and imagine each of those components as a block. So Leah went through and, and she did this fantastic inventory where she said we need, you know, we need this for, for the date and time block. Um, we, need, you know, we need stuff for our organizers and these are the, the various fields that we're gonna, we're gonna be talking about. Uh, we're gonna need things for the venue uh, with maps and addresses and, and various settings, right? And again, with the price block and then again with the website block. Right. Oh, and, and then finally, you know, with this export block where we've got buttons. This one was interesting. We don't have anything about export actually in the editor, but when we render an event, we have those export buttons on the front end. So this was an instance where we took something that was on the front end and we needed to map that back into the editor. We never let people control that in the editing experience before, but now with Gutenberg, rather than just have a button at the bottom that says export to iCal, we might want to put a button at the bottom and let somebody change that button label, right? This is sort of getting into the Gutenberg thinking and, and inventorying, not just the things in the editor. She said, okay, we've, we've sketched all these blocks, uh, all these potential blocks that we're going to need. Uh, we'll send the designers off. Uh, they can create kind of some beautiful design UI kit for us to use that, that straddles the fence between uh, looking like core WordPress while also introducing uh, UI patterns that, that work for our particular components that we have. Uh, so they created these, these great uh, uh, sort, of, sort of UI kit for us. And we were like, yay, we're done. We just have to take and we have to apply that paint to our blocks and everything uh, will be perfect. But nothing's quite that simple. Uh, that, that would have been far too easy. We, we could not simply just take those blocks, put a coat of paint on them, uh, drop them in Gutenberg and say, we're done. Instead, we had to actually think about adapting to Gutenberg. So back to the date and time block. So we think about this piece. Um, one of the things that the meta boxes allowed us to do, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but we could construct a fairly dense UI that, that had the important chunky data elements that we needed, but not have to really worry about the user interface and how it would look uh, on the front end, right? But there was no one-to-one -one mapping. We didn't have to worry about that editor experience translating all the way through to our customer's visitor's experience. So that immediately added some complexity. We, we inventoried those components. I, I showed the same sketch before. Uh, and we started thinking about how do we, how do we take these, these UI elements and, and present them and map them in a way that will be intuitive on the back end? So our first attempt at this looked sleeker. You know, it was, was like, okay, this is, this is pretty tight. 
people can, can click on the date and change the date. This is the sort of edit inline kind of concept. Um, but these icon affordances are really strange. Um, these weren't gonna show up on the front end. They weren't really appropriate. But without them, it sort of felt weird to not know like what am I looking at here? It, it felt kind of incongruous to us and, and also lacked depth for some of the other options. We had, we still had to be able to say things like all day. We still had to be able to control, um, uh, control things like uh, uh, the, 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 you know, the at symbol or the dash, those kinds of things, the time zone, all of this stuff. Um, and so this was kind of awkward. So then one of our designers came back to us and said, well, what if we, when you click on the date, we actually sort of uh, kind of like if you've seen the, the Twitter block or the image block, you get a slightly different UI when it first shows up, right? Or, or when you click into it, you get a slightly different UI. They said, hey, how about a UI like this? We said, okay, well, now we're getting into something. You know, we, we've got a UI that kind of makes sense. We've got a little bit more space to work with. Um, but there's a lot of pieces here that we don't really need most of the time. If you're creating events, when you first, you know, you do a few, you might be changing some of these settings, like the date separator or the time separator. Um, you might be toggling that multi-day on, on an occasional event or, or adjusting your time zone. But, but most of these things, you don't have to change all the time. So this is where we were like, okay, we're starting to actually understand Gutenberg. We're starting to understand some of these patterns. And this is where we said, okay, now we understand. We've got the block settings where we can shift some of that stuff, right? We can push things like separators and time zones into block settings. And if you need to adjust them or it feels right, you can go do that, but it's not required for most people. Then we still get enough space for this multi-month view. Uh, we've got some nice toggles for, uh, for multi-day. We're starting to feel pretty good. And when you're not in that, you get a pretty nice, tight, sleek UI. No more goofy icon affordances. Uh, th things look, look pretty good. So this is where we ended up. Uh, lots, of, lots of iteration to get to this particular UI. But suddenly, we were like, OK, this, this is starting, starting to look like, like something that's functional in the editor and reflects what it's going to look like on the front end and, and is a piece that, that actually can work. Obviously, we went through that same process for each of the blocks we talked about before. We went through that process for, uh, for price and for organizer and for venue. Uh, and I'm not going to bore you with the details of going through each of those explorations individually. Um, but but the, the main lessons we learned as we were building these is that we still needed feature parity. We, we couldn't go to a new version of the events calendar that, that suddenly had less features or less customizability. We just needed to maintain all that stuff. Um, we learned that, that this idea of having a slightly different state on the block while it was active versus when it was kind of in this like preview uh, was something that was effective when we had a lot of uh, UI components that we needed to display for, uh, for structured data elements. So we could turn a field, uh, we could turn a block more into a form when someone was interacting with it. And as soon as they got out of that form, uh, we could show it to them more like the way that it would look uh, in reality. And then the, the final thing that we learned as we were building these was, was about really how to employ those block settings and really to say, okay, in block settings, we can put things that are non-essential and really just impact the way that something's gonna, uh, gonna look on the front end, more, more alternative um, appearance options. So the, the beautiful thing that we got to was, uh, you know, you can put together an event, you can enter in that metadata, and, and in that event editor interface, you can, you can start to put these pieces together, uh, you can lay out those blocks, and you can start to have an interface that closely maps to what's on the front end, adds the extra power of Gutenberg to that event editing experience uh, and, and really kind of embraces Gutenberg while also maintaining as much of that structured uh, component that we're, that we're used to. So kind of, kind of wrapping up a little bit, um, some of the main lessons that we learned is first, you need time to think this stuff through. Uh, Gutenberg's a big change. Uh, you're not going to just take 
things that you've been doing for years and immediately map them uh, to this new paradigm or this new technology stack and interface. You, you do have to kind of embrace these things and, and learn them. Um, you want to break it into smaller pieces. What, what Gutenberg offers is pretty vast, and that vastness can feel overwhelming. And what we don't want is to get into a situation where we're like, do nothing, right? We want to we wanna get into this and move, move forward. Smaller pieces help for that. Looking for patterns helps. You know, identifying areas where, uh, where you can use Gutenberg to accomplish a certain task and then reapply that again and again, like our UI kit, like figuring out the active versus preview state, understanding truly how to use block settings, these sorts of things. Those patterns help you move faster. One of the challenging things throughout this process, uh, and is I think going to remain very true uh, as Gutenberg continues to move forward and new phases and, and new modifications to the WordPress dashboard come out, um, is we need to stay informed and adapt to the changes that are happening. We need to, um, you know, I had both Leah, our strategist, and Gustavo, our lead developer, they don't participate a lot, but they're reading the Slack conversations every day. Uh, they're looking at all the code that's coming through the Gutenberg Git repository. Uh, they're watching those tickets that come in because all of that stuff affects the way that, that we have to adapt uh, the way our plugin's gonna work with Gutenberg. And honestly, almost every Gutenberg release that's come out so far has broken our extension. That, that's, that's part of the reality. We needed to know that those things were happening and then react. Um, I know Gutenberg 3.3 came out on Friday, and I was thankful I wasn't doing a live demo today, because I didn't know if it was going to work. So, uh, you know, this is part of the process. It's all, it's all new. It's all fresh. There's lots of, like, adapting. So in summary, I, I, part of what our, our kind of recipe here has been is to, is to get stoked about Gutenberg, like get really excited and really optimistic about what this is. We're all in on this. It's the future of WordPress. We, across the board on our team, are, are legitimately excited about, about Gutenberg. Then from there, we've been thinking big. We've been thinking about not just what we need to do to, to exist or to survive, but, but what the events calendar can become and what additional power we can put in the hands of our customers as, as we adapt more and more to it. And then finally, this act small idea is that we don't have to address all of that stuff simultaneously. We don't have to build the final ideal state, but we do need to make some progress now so that we don't get left behind and so that, so that we're learning this stuff uh, as quickly as we can. All right, the, before I start taking questions, uh, we have also on our team been doing a lot of kind of public outreach work. Uh, there's a link here, sort of working from the bottom up. There's a link here to the Gutenberg extension that we've been working on for the events calendar. Uh, go check that out, install it. Uh, I'm sorry if it's broken right now. I literally don't know if it is or not. Uh, I hope it's not. Uh, but, but check it out. If it is broken, let us know, because we'll fix it as quickly as we can, which will be hopefully very quick. Uh, we're still trying to put iterations out on that uh, every week to two weeks. Uh, it's, it's changing constantly. Um, we are currently writing an ebook about, uh, about Gutenberg and some of the process that we've been through. Uh, I expect that to be published later this summer uh, and, and you know, look out for that. Uh, we have been writing uh, a Going Gutenberg blog series, which my slides uh, stole very heavily from. Uh, we've got a great author on our team who's been uh, acting sort of as an embedded reporter and attending all the dev meetings and capturing the process of how we've been evolving the events calendar. Uh, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you want you know, a peek behind the curtain, any of the things I said sounded at all interesting, you should go read the stuff that George wrote. He's much better than I am and has a lot more detail. Uh, it's a really great series. I think we've written, we just released our sixth post, sixth post in that series. It's really fun. Check that out. And then finally, uh, if you're looking for me, Twitter, WordPress, Slack, those are great places. Uh, Modern Tribe itself, my, my company, is, uh, is a cool place to check out uh, what we've got going on. All right, let's take some questions.
Amanda. I have so many questions, but I think I can narrow it down to two major ones. All right, great. Um, one is, so when users are creating an event, are they now adding those blocks themselves, or did you find a way to kind of auto-populate a page with, with the layout? So she asked uh, for the video. Uh, she asked, when a user's creating an event, do they have to select all the blocks themselves or are they presented with those uh, to start? And I'll just quickly, oh, I hit the wrong button. Um, I'll just quickly go back. And if you look at this particular slide, uh, you'll see this is the state when you first go to create a new event. So we, we have, we're using a block layout to, to pre-populate the blocks that we know most people are gonna need. Now you can insert regular Gutenberg blocks in here, you can rearrange them, you can do whatever you want, but uh, we pre-populate that with the stuff that we think for an effective event, you really should have this stuff. Awesome, so I didn't know about block layouts. Yay! My second question is, how does this effect, um, I know your plugin has So the question was, our plugin, uh, one of the big advantages of the events calendar is it's highly extensible. Uh, we've got lots of hooks and filters and all kinds of things and people build weird fancy stuff that we delight in. Uh, how are we gonna address that? I actually have no idea. Um, this, this goes to the, I have a team behind me. I, it's, it's a concern. I, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, all I can say is, watch our blog series. I'm sure we're gonna be publishing about it soon. Uh, whether or not we've solved it already, which maybe has happened, or if we're waiting to solve it, we'll, we'll be publishing when that happens. Yeah, I, mean, I can definitely see that, uh, you know, rendering some partials when we need to develop on the templating side of this. Yeah. We're creating partial files, but yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, that's all. Thanks. Yeah. So the question was, uh, this uh, lady has, uh, uh, their site has lots of events, like 300 events. Uh, are they all gonna break when Gutenberg comes out? Uh, the, the hope, the desire, everything we're testing for is no. We, we do not intend to break anybody's stuff. Uh, we're working very hard to make sure that's, that doesn't happen. Uh, core team is working very hard to make sure that doesn't happen. I, I can't make any promises, but uh, we are gonna be testing very heavily against that. Um, both the idea that you could install the classic editor and stay on the classic editor and not make this jump, that's one option, but we're also testing um, going back and forth between the, uh, between the classic editor and the Gutenberg editor and having that, that compatibility go in both directions. Uh, we're actively testing that. It seems to be working really well right now. I, we, have, we have less fear from our developers than I have at this moment, right? Like they're telling me this, this seems to work. This seems to be going pretty well. Uh, I share your concern and we will still be, we'll be testing very heavily. Yes, sir. Yeah, the question was about required blocks. Uh, unless somebody from the core team can correct me, there's still no concept of a required block, correct? No, there's still no concept of a required block. Uh, what we're doing is some JavaScript hacks that remove the possibility of you removing specifically the date and time block. Uh, I think we are letting people remove the other ones, but you can't have an event without date and time. So it's really, really awkward for us if customers can remove that block. It's gonna cause them confusion, they're gonna be weirded out by it. So we have a JavaScript hack, which we're hoping maybe core support will come and we can remove our hack. But right now, we have achieved required blocks with a sort of weird, hacky customization. Yes, sir. I've never actually used
Yeah, so the question was about API access to the events calendar data. Um, entertainingly, we, we added API support last summer specifically because we've been building a SaaS solution off the events calendar. Uh, not to replace it as a completely parallel solution that we're really excited about. Check out Loxy, it's our new SaaS based calendar. Uh, so we had built extensive API support. Um, that was a really nice thing that we did because we needed it for Gutenberg. Um, so that, that API, we're actually actively using our own APIs as part of Gutenberg and then um, so far we haven't had it to make any major modifications to those. It, everything seems to be similar. Um, the one thing that's a little bit weirder is the actual post content that fetches backs a little bit different. So if you're rendering content out of the API, you might have to act a little bit differently. But Overall, we're not making any major changes to that, which is great. Did you have another question, Amanda? Oh, I think I know the answer, but essentially, even though you created these blocks, I'm assuming all of the custom fields and taxonomy and everything are essentially handled when you save the block. You're still storing that other data in other fields. It's still chunky, essentially. Yeah, so the question was, was really about the chunkiness and whether or not we are still using custom post types, custom taxonomies, associating you know, organizers with events and those kinds of things. And absolutely, that's what we're doing. Um, many of these blocks um, from a post content perspective are, are kind of dumb. You know, they don't, they don't show a lot of like, they're not, it's not a lot of complexity there because really we're associating with, uh, in the case of an organizer, another organizer. And one of the things we actually played with uh, was how to do multi-organizer support. Um, right now, our working theory is you would add a second organizer block and just choose another organizer. In the background, we can now associate with two organizers, just like we always have. Um, but we're doing it with by adding two separate blocks as opposed to adding some extra UI to the organizer block to se select another organizer. But yes. Uh, a vast majority of the stuff you're looking at still, you know, the date and time are being stored in custom post meta, the, uh, you know, all day toggle is stored there, the, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Kelly. I missed the, I missed the tail end of what you said. So uh, the question is, do we have third party developers for the events calendar? Um, it's fairly limited. I would say we have uh, two or three significant third party add-ons. Most of our add-ons are, are our own add-ons. Um, some of them are free, some of them are premium. Um, but yeah, we, do, we have a few. Ex, do you say, oh, extensibility? Yeah. yeah, I actually, I sort of half answered that question uh, earlier. Uh, the question was about how, how are we gonna handle extensibility for those third parties? Um, I don't actually know. Um, I'm, I'm not entirely certain, you know, I know a lot about hooks and filters and, you know, actions and all of that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't yet know totally how it works with Gutenberg. Um, I have much smarter people than me who I really hope do uh, because it's important. We, we care about those third party people. We care, you know, those are like the add-ons we know about. We also know that there are tons of agencies, including our own, that, that do a lot of extensibility that is, you know, custom for a theme or, or they're, you know, actually Divi does a, does a great override of our themes. Uh, we want to be able to support that. We want to make sure that um, those sorts of customizations remain possible. Yes? So you mentioned you made a hack so that they can't remove the block. Did you also make a hack so they couldn't add another date block? Yeah, so I, I think that this is core functionality, uh, that you can make a block only addable once, or is that something that we did as well? I'm getting sort of a, a uncertain head bobble. Uh, I'm not sure. Yes, you can only add the date and time block once, uh, which is also true for like the price block that we have. You can only add the price block once. Um, for some of the blocks, we've also played with the idea of, 
might actually be the price block now that I think of it. Uh, the idea that if you add it the second time, when you edit either of them, they just synchronize so that they are effectively the exact same block. And when you edit either one, the other one just updates real time. Uh, React makes that stuff pretty easy. But I'm being told I'm out of time. And uh, if anybody has any other questions, please approach me afterwards or at the after party or any of those sorts of things. I'm always happy to talk about this stuff. Thank you.